During the first weekend in May, the Drone Stata X conference hit Santa Cruz. The event, originally founded in Ireland, moved to Santa Cruz in the hopes of making more drone technology firms aware of the area. Event founder Philip McNamara hopes Santa Cruz will become the center of drone technology. So a few reasons. Um, first of all, the, the, the number of people that live here is much less dense than in, in Silicon Valley. So you have you know towns like Palo Alto and Mountain View, large populations, not very much space. Whereas Santa Cruz has an amazing you know open landscape, forests, trees, you know seascape. It's a it's a great place to start a drone company. You're only 45 minutes from Silicon Valley. So for all those reasons, it, it's it's a really good place to start a drone company. The conference is part of a larger effort to bring tech jobs to the area. Santa Cruz Works, a local nonprofit, also tries to make tech firms aware of the potential benefits of doing business in Santa Cruz. And we are trying to promote the Santa Cruz tech community both internally so people who live here can also understand that there are great companies that, that are in Santa Cruz that they can work for as well as externally to tell the world that Santa Cruz is a great place to start up grow and sustain great tech businesses. The event, which featured various experts speaking about the future of drone technology and some incoming regulations on the industry, also served as an opportunity for local drone and helicopter companies to advertise their tech to different commercial investors or interested customers. Uh, we build a purpose-built UAV uh, unmanned uh, aerial helicopter platform to carry the Epic Red Cinema cameras. An electric platform and a gas platform. Both helicopters weigh 55 pounds. The electric helicopter will fly for 30 minutes. Uh, gas helicopter with an 80cc gasoline two-stroke engine will fly for one hour. Both helicopters will fly at a speed of 70 miles an hour. Uh, they have full GPS. We can fly them completely autonomously, though the FAA right now requires that we fly them via line of sight. In terms of restrictions and the negative perceptions of drones, McNamara believes the industry will be able to overcome those hurdles in the long term. Yeah, so the regulations are still there. Um, there's still, you know, I think the biggest hurdles are really around the, 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 the physical limits of, of batteries and how much battery, how much power batteries can hold. That still is going to be an issue because most drones are going to be flying 20, 30 minutes. So, uh, you know, apart from that, the regulation side, the regulations will get fixed because companies will push uh, the government to change the regulations. Uh, but I think the companies will make a big difference in the next couple of years. We'll see a lot more activity in drones. You know, so people are afraid of, uh, you know, security concerns, they're afraid of spying, they're afraid of, you know, drones causing noise. All those problems exist today and they're totally valid points. I think what's going to happen is that people will begin to see that drones offer more benefits than negative bits. What will happen is that drones will start delivering medicine, drones will start helping save people who are drowning at sea by dropping, dropping a life vest to them. Drones will de deliver a defibrillator to someone who's you know, getting a heart attack in the city. An ambulance could take 20 minutes to get to someone, whereas a drone could take 30 seconds. Those are the type of life-saving applications we'll see in the next few years. Mr. Neuner believes there's a lot for the burgeoning drone industry to take advantage of in the area, and that the incorporation of more tech companies will bring economic growth and benefits to the community. We have a tremendous history of, of entrepreneurship and innovation that dates all the way back to the middle of the 20th century. We've got such amazing history of, of, of tech and innovation here in Santa Cruz. So there's a great sort of platform to build on. Uh, we also have amazingly talented people uh, who are here. Our, uh, our, our population is higher than average, educated pretty much across the board. Um, and then it's just a place that we think really just inspires people. It's a place that it's hard to not be inspired when you live in Santa Cruz. I mean, with, with, between the people and the natural beauty um, and the great, uh, the great culture and the great lifestyle and the great companies that are here. Um, people want to be, want to live here and they want to work here. I'm hoping to have it here, like the, the kite surfing and the mountain biking is too good to pass up in Santa Cruz, so we, we hopefully will be able to do it here next year. Like Santa Cruz is an amazing spot and we have this great location here. We'll fill it up, we've got 4,000 seats we can fill up. So we'll put everything together and we'll have an even bigger conference next year. A local protest group, Save Our Skies, took advantage of the event to bring attention to a newly approved jet route over the Santa Cruz area that protesters argue bring unnecessary noise into the community. Though the group wasn't directly protesting drones or the event, it's clear that the Santa Cruz community will be dealing with the FAA in multiple capacities soon. This has been Nick Kazin with Banana Slug News. Thank you for watching.